Yes, to, if you would recognize Sara Barber with the state SCAD VASA, state coalition, just for a couple of minutes, please. And after that, if you could give us, I know there are a lot of people out there who are still curious about how this process is going to work after she's done, if there could be some conversation for the benefit of the audience about what the next, what the lay of the land is and what the plans are. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. Hey, thank you very Scott much, Hunter Representative. Scott Hunter bought you two minutes. Okay, I call three, is that okay? Um, so my name is Sarah Barber. I'm the Executive Director of the South Carolina Coalition Against Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault. And I'm here today representing the 22 member agencies. That's nine rape crisis centers, seven domestic violence programs, and six organizations who serve survivors of both domestic violence and sexual assault. I have provided a written, formal written request, which I sent to each of your emails and to the staff, and can send again if you need it, um, that requested $5.7 million in funding from the state's award under the American Rescue Plan for these organizations. And that um, formal request contains statistics, stories from advocates, and documentation of the ongoing decline in funding from the Victims of Crime Act that began in 2018, has continued through the pandemic, and is predicted to continue until at least financial year 22. The COVID-19 epidemic has provided further challenges in meeting the needs that result from the endemic ongoing high levels of domestic and sexual violence that we see year after year in the state. Services that have always been provided in person, such as counseling, hospital accompaniment, advocacy, have had to be creatively imagined on virtual platforms immediately. Shelters have had to be supplemented or replaced with hotel rooms as programs work to keep both clients and staff healthy while providing the essential refuge to families fleeing violence in their homes. At the same time as these programs are losing core funding from VOCA and are unable to engage in many of their community fundraising activities, they're facing the increased cost of providing those services in a pandemic increased costs in technology and outreach, the increased costs of utilizing hotels to provide shelter add up very, very quickly. And in my written request, I reported one of our member organizations had spent $140,000 in a six month period on hotel rooms, but another has spent $500,000 on hotel rooms since the beginning of the pandemic in March, 2020. We are requesting this funding to ensure that our member organizations can continue to provide these life-saving services for survivors. We believe the direct request directly meets the intent of the American Rescue Plan to help communities prevent, prepare, and respond to the impacts of the pandemic by providing a critical foundational supplement to programs working to mitigate the immediate and long-term effects at the intersection of COVID-19 and the shadow pandemic that we have of domestic and sexual violence here. We hope that you'll give strong consideration to our request as an opportunity to help prevent additional losses to these programs and the South Carolina citizens they serve through sustaining their ability to effectively respond to the adults and children who are experiencing extreme crisis in this time of community disruption, immense stress, and continued uncertainty. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, and thank you for being brief. Any questions? All right, so, Mr. thank you. Thank you.